So uh, Jackie was having a, a long prodromal labor. People that don't know what that is, it's basically labor, but it lasts for a long time. Uh, with Finn, she had a long labor, four days. With Cohen, it was uh, it was started Monday night. It actually started Sunday night, all day Monday. She was in labor, um, and then for any woman that knows what labor feels like, I have no idea what it feels like. I, I mean, I couldn't even imagine. Um, it's gonna hurt. And so all day Monday, she was in labor. Um, it would slow down. She'd lay down. It would get. It would go back. She'd go back into labor by every five minutes apart. Um, and then uh, Wednesday morning, or Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, um, about three thirty, she went into labor, and uh, like it was happening. So we call our uh, doula over, and her water broke at the house, and there was mycomium in the water again. Same thing with Finn. So we had to be transported to the hospital. Um, everything is, is still safe at this time. It's just precautionary that we take the ambulance to the hospital before the baby progresses further when we can't, um, and it is an emergency. So we get to the hospital. Uh, everything's still fine. She's, she's pushing. Um, you know, the baby's not progressing like it should be progressing. Um, our midwife even commented that she's never seen someone push like that and not progress like that. Or and it not progress, and so as the the labor and delivery continues on, um, our midwife consults out to the OBGYN, and he is the head of um, OBs at uh, at Vic, um, Dr. Natali, and he is an amazing person. He did an amazing job. Um, you know, it's 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 a good thing that he was there because he was needed at that time, and that's what medicine is for: is that emergency. And, uh, you know, the only thing that concerned him was um, Cohen's heart rate was dropping a little bit after Jackie would have a contraction and try and push. So he said, you know, I'm going to let you push for another hour. Um, and if nothing progresses further, uh, if anyone knows, uh, the head was at about plus two. So there's, there's levels that the head will descend out the birth canal. So his head was was at about plus two, and this was the same issue we had with Finn. Um, his head was just stuck in in an awkward position, and uh, it wasn't coming out. So the hour had passed; nothing had happened. We had went. Uh, we were going to an operating room because um, that's where they they wanted to assist with a uh, with the forceps. Um, uh, one on a side note, when we got there, I, we were kind of upset because one of the nurses takes a look at. Jackie and and he says she says, well the head's not very far so you know you're probably going to have to have a C-section and this is not something a mother wants to hear when she's trying to deliver a child and this baby we start crying together and um, she she just looks at me and says you know just look at me because you know I want to have this baby vaginally and uh, so she pushes as hard as she can and, and it still doesn't happen. Um, and so when Dr. Natale comes into the room, which, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy that he was with us and, uh, the nurse says, Oh, I, you know, the head's not very far. He looks at her and he says, um, just prepare the forceps, basically telling her like, shut up, let me do my job. You do what I ask you to do, which was, which was good because, you know, it, it, it put Jackie at ease too, that he, that we were going to get a chance to do this. And, uh, so he puts the forceps he inserts them. He doesn't crunch down on the head like the forcep deliveries that I have seen um, through classes. Uh, what he does is he just scoops it underneath enough to create a space for the baby's head to pop out. And Cohen's head just releases immediately. Um, and he just says, hold on for one sec. Um, for Jackie, Jackie pushes, the shoulders clear, everything clears. Um, they tie down the cord. He asked me to cut it. I cut the cord. They take the baby and they take it to another room because of the mycomium, which was in the um, the lungs. Well, it was in it was in her water when it broke. So after the mycom after the delivery, they have to go in. Respiratory therapist has to clean out the lungs to ensure that that mycomium doesn't get into the lung tissue. Um, so they don't want it to take a breath when it's born. Um, so they transfer it to uh, the respiratory therapists. They start to clean out the lungs. I actually go, it's, it's in a separate room. So I actually go into the, the other room 
And uh, the nurse and the respiratory therapist basically says, you know, this is not a good time, assuming that I'm going to be upset if I see a blue child. Um, because I would imagine most fathers would not know what to do. Um, and, and some people have asked in, in the office, like, were you scared? Were you worried? And, and I wasn't. I was, this is my life. This is my job. Um, I was on autopilot. This is what I do on a daily basis, whether you're sick, whether you're healthy, whether you have a symptom, whether you don't. I check the spine and make an adjustment. And so I walk back. He's, he's blue. He has very little tone in his arms. Like... It's tough to describe. I mean, it, I don't know if anyone has ever been around a dead person or not, but I mean, you lift, you lift his arms and, and it was like it was jelly, like it was jello. It would just fall like spaghetti. And so he has no tone. Um, he's, he's not pink. He's not. His APGAR score is two. His heart rate is terrible. He's, he's just barely breathing after they've cleared out his lungs. And um, I basically, I just put my hands on him to keep him warm with one hand and then I checked underneath the skull, and then I checked with both hands, and I found that he had a left atlas subluxation. So naturally, I just, I'm on autopilot, I check him, I do a sustained contact, I hold my finger there until you actually feel the muscle grab that vertebrae and, and pull it back into alignment. I check him, I make the necessary adjustment, I let go of what I can do now and let his body do what it's supposed to do or do the work put my hands on his belly, and I'm just holding him. Um, I mean, I was steps away from ripping my shirt off and holding him on my chest. Um, and so I'm just sitting there, and all the nurses kind of are like, wow, they don't even know what happened. All his tone is returning. The color is returning to his skin. He's starting to breathe. He's starting to cry. He's squawking. And they have no idea what had just happened because, you know, in this situation, what typically would have happened is, is we would have been sent to NICU and he would have had to stay there for two weeks. And just that simple adjustment changed his life. I mean, it probably saved his life for all we know. I mean, it could have been the difference between cerebral palsy and a, and a healthy child. It could have been the difference between anything. It was just me doing my job to my loved ones. And this is how I practice in my office, whether you're related to me or not check your spine, I make the adjustment, I deliver it, and I put the love behind it like I'm saving someone's life, and I did that day, I saved my son's life.